Hi there! In this video, I'll be showing you how to work with Telerik reporting. I'll guide you through the creation of a simple report like the one you see on your screen. It has some text, an image, and a table. This table returns data from the database. This data is filtered based on the parameters that we pass. For example, if we select Spain in the country drop-down list and hit preview, we'll get the records that are from the country Spain. In addition to that, that report will be designed in the Telerik Report Designer application. And of course, you can also preview the report from here. Finally, this report can be downloaded as a PDF file that you can just download as a regular paper. All right, so uh, let's get started. Most of the data that I'll be using in this demonstration came from the website generatedata.com. I simply just clicked on the data format and selected some of the fields that I wanted, name, country, street address, click generate. It generates a script of some SQL. I can modify this to go from MySQL to Microsoft SQL Server. And then I took this data, I popped it in MySQL Server, and then I modified it. So I created two tables, one for the country, which is just a primary key with the name of the country, and then a table person address. This table holds the name of the person, the ID, which is a foreign key of the country, the address, and a date. And then I entered some data into the country table and into the person address. Finally, I created two store procedures, one that will return the data that we want based on the filters that we pass. And then finally, a procedure that just returns the countries in that table. Now let's create the web application. I'm going to create a ASP.NET framework application. You can create a .NET core application. It's going to be extremely similar. This is just what I'm comfortable with currently. Uh, let's just call this Telerik reporting YouTube tutorial. Yeah, that should be good. And this is the version that I want. I'll click create and let's just go with the MVC template. All right, now that we have our application created, we need to make sure that we have the correct extension. Now, if you already downloaded Telerik Report Designer, then there was an option where you selected which Visual Studio you wanted to modify. If you did that, then you will have the extension. You can go to Manix Extensions, click on Installed, and uh, it should be Telerik Reporting Tools. If you haven't done this, if I'm not mistaken, you can type on the Online tab, whoops, uh, Telerik Reporting. And I believe it's this, you can click the download button and it'll take you to a link on the page where you can just download the, the trial. After you do that and you restart Visual Studio, you can actually create the report using the template. Now let's create our report. Expand the views directory and select which subdirectory you want the report to be in. Click add, new item, wait for the templates to load. Make sure you select web and then search for Telerik. I'll be choosing the Telerik MVC report viewer. This creates a CS HTML file, which I'll be calling YouTube tutorial. Click on add. This wizard will come up. Click on uh, create new rest service. Next, I'll leave the sample report definition. Next, I will enable accessibility and then I'll finish. This wizard, once it's done processing, it'll create the CSHTML file. It'll create a reports folder with the TRDP file, and it also will create a controller called reports controller. All right, once the files have been created, you'll get these two tabs. You can close this log tab. We can see that we now have a CSHTML file called YouTube tutorials. This is a complete HTML file with some styling, some scripts and the Telerik reporting report viewer control. This control points to the sample report TRDP file, which was created here. It'll create a new directory and it'll create a TDRP file. This is the file that will be open in Telerik report designer. In addition to that, a controller was created called reports controller. You can open it and take a quick look at it. All right, so now that we have these things created, let's go to our home controller and create the route.
our view is called YouTube tutorial and our method YouTube tutorial. All right, so let's run this application. All right, now that our application is running, we can actually navigate to the route that we just created, home slash YouTube tutorial. And as you can see, we have the sample report loading in our screen right now. Okay, so now I'm going to go and design this report to make it look like what I showed you in the beginning. You can go to Visual Studio, uh, stop the application, and navigate to that TRDP file, sample report. You can double click it, and uh, it'll open it with the Telerik Report Designer application. And if it doesn't, you can just select the executable from the path. All right, so we just opened the report. We can see the sample report text and the hyperlinks, the date and parameters data value, the footer, and just everything that we just saw in our browser. Okay, so I'm going to delete most of the information that we see here. I'm going to delete all of this text, these uh, parameters state value. I'll leave the header. I'll delete this text over here and I'll leave the footer number. In addition to that, I'll be deleting the date parameter. Do not need that right now. All right, so now our report is pretty much blank. The first thing that I wanna make sure is that this report is printer friendly. So I can right click over here, click page settings, and uh, I can actually make sure that the paper size is letter. That's good. However, I do not want any margins on my left and right. They are not uh, very printer friendly when you have a big table that is spread across the whole paper. So we selected that. Another thing that I want to do is to actually rename this report. So you can see that it's named sample report here at the bottom. I'll be naming that uh, YouTube tutorial. Now when the report is downloaded from the browser, it'll contain this name as the file name. Next, let's add a picture. We can click on the section that we want to add it. Um, I'll be adding it in the header section. Uh, clicked on it, highlighted it. Click on insert and select picture box. Now, one thing to note about pictures is that they need to be the exact size that we need them. You can't uh, import a large picture and then resize it. I found that that does cause some issues because I think I managed to resize a JPEG picture on the report. However, when I previewed it in the browser, it just went back to its original size, which it was often a lot bigger than I needed it to be. So. You can actually select the picture box and uh, go here to the properties in the size and look at the width and actually make it a little bit wider. All right. It says 3.15 inches. Now, something that I do to make sure that I'm resizing things properly, I go and convert the inch to the pixel. So if I wanted it to be 3.15, I would take a picture, PNG preferably, and I'll re resize the width to this. So uh, let's click on style. You'll get this little pop-up. You can select the logo that we want. The repeat option, I'll click no repeat and I click okay. And now we have it. You see, uh, I can't actually control the size of this picture, just how much is seen in the picture box. So it is important to have that specific size that you want to use beforehand, or at least that's what I found. And now, finally, the last thing that we'll be adding to our report is the most important one. We'll be adding our table. So we can select the section that we want to add into, go to the Insert tab and click on Table and select Table Wizard. Here, we need to create a data source that we can pull data from. So let's click on the new data source, select SQL data source. I'll be naming this get person address. Click OK. And now we have to add the information for our database. Click on build new data connection and enter the connection string. Now, in your case, you'll probably have a username and a password. Since I'm doing this locally in this computer, I don't need to enter this information. So I can just remove this and leave it as this. 
All right, we can click on next. It, it is important to embed the connection into the report definition. If you don't do this, you'll run into some problems when you preview it in your browser, uh, you'll probably get an error. So I found that it's always good to have it embedded. So click next. And now let's select the, the, the store procedure. So I'll be using get person address, click next again. And we have uh, the four parameters that we specified in our store procedure. If you go back to our SQL script, we can see that we have those four parameters right here. All right, so our first parameter is probably the most difficult one. So let's select a new report parameter. We want to allow null values and then we want this to be visible. If you don't mark this as true, then the report will run, but uh, you won't be able to enter your parameters. So make sure you have this on true, especially if it's a required field. And as for the text, we can just rename this to country. Now we can click on the available value section and uh, on the data source, we need to add a data source for these values that will be an option for this field. So we need to add a new data source again, click on SQL data source. Uh, let's call this countries. Uh, get. And then we run through the same uh, procedure again. So enter your connection string, select embedded, click on next, uh, select our store procedure, get countries, click on next. We can actually execute the query and make sure that it is working, which it is. We can see the, the uh, countries right here. And then we click on finish. All right, so we have our data source. We need to add the display member. This is the value that will be seen uh, from the user's perspective. We need to select uh, the field name, click on OK. And then for value member, this is the value that the system will accept. And it'll be the primary key, country ID. Click on OK. And uh, that should be it. And then the rest of the parameters are pretty simple. Again, uh, new report parameter. Make sure that we allow nulls. Make sure that it's a visible parameter. And uh, we can change the name. So person name. All right, now that we have our parameters all set, we can click next. And uh, if you want to assign a constant value, you can do that. I won't be doing that. We can actually execute the query to see if the, the store procedure is working. And we see that we do get some values return and uh, click finish. All right, and now we're back to the screen again. Let's select the data source that we just created. And this is these are going to be the table columns. So we want a uh, person name first, then we'll do country, then we'll do address, and then finally the date. Click on next. We can uh, select some styling. Uh, I like this office one. Click on next and then click on finish. And there we have, we have our table right here. Now let me make this table wider. And uh, as we can see, we have the four columns that we define. And if we save this and preview it, we will get the results. Oh, there we go. We have our header our image and our results in a table, all the data and the footer number. Another thing that you might want to do is to add, edit these columns, the text, we can center them and make them bold. And in addition to that, another thing that I like to do to tables is to go to the properties here in the bottom right, there is going to be a property for the headers, column headers print on every page. I'll set that to true. And now what happens is then when we have a second page in our document, instead of the table just continuing with the, the rows, the columns names will be printed on each page. So that is very helpful. Great, now we're done designing our report. Now let's go and preview it on our
browser. Before we do that though, we need to make sure that our web application has a connection to the database. So let's go to our web config and add the connection string, the same one that we added in our uh, data sources. So once we have that, we can run the application again. And if we refresh our page, there we go, we have our report, we have our header, our picture, and the table. On the right side, we see that we have the country uh, selection, the person name, the date, and the end. So let's select Spain, and let's filter, and we have our results for Spain. And uh, we can actually go ahead and search for something else. Let's search for all of the Camerons. And we only have one, so that's good. All right, so the parameters seem to be working. However, this report uh, doesn't look that great. The parameters area, this list here is quite ugly. I want a drop-down list and uh, I want a different uh, CSS styling. I also want to have access to the navbar of our application. So uh, let's do that right now. All right, so now let's make our report viewer a lot better. This page, we want to actually use our underscore layout. So we'll be actually modifying this file too. But before I do that, I'm actually going to replace all this code for this right here. Pretty uh, streamlined. We have our script that brings in the Telerik report viewer and our control. We have this line, which is very important. This line is what makes the uh, countries list appear as a dropdown list. I included this commented line with uh, the common net core. If I'm not mistaken, this is the line that you use to actually get this to work on .NET Core. As you can see, the parameters object here is different. Parameters, parameters option, and then editors, editors options. In addition to that, there are some changes in some of these parameters to just make it more zoomed in. So we have that done. So now let's go and modify our layout CSHTML. Okay, so we want to move these uh, scripts to the top and include uh, the jQuery that was included in the original report file. So I'm just going to replace this code. And as we can see here, we have the, the scripts that were below up here. And then this was the jQuery that was included in the original file. You can use the one that's provided by Visual Studio or whatever. It, it's probably okay. So we just click save and now we go back to our browser and we click on refresh. We now have our navigation bar and our country options are sealed away in this uh, dropdown list. The report is zoomed in, which looks now a lot better. Now, uh, something that we can also do is download this report as a PDF file. So we can click on the download icon, select uh, Adobe Acrobat PDF file, and uh, just select the file. We can open it here, and uh, here's the report. However, there's, there's something weird. There's this space here on the right. Now, I actually forgot to uh, make sure that the size of this was completely printer friendly. We made sure that the page itself was uh, 8.5 8 inches. However, I did not do that for the report itself. So we can actually click on this part of the report and go to the property section on the layout on the width. We can actually see that it's not 8.5, it's actually 7.6. So let me modify this 8.5. The report gets wider and uh, can actually make this table wider. Okay, let's save this. Let's um, refresh our report viewer on the browser. We can download the file again. And now we see that it is actually, it does fit the page nicely. You can print this, it'll come out great. And in addition to that, we can see that the it has multiple pages and that the second page does have the table headers again. And it has the numbered page to up to. 
Now for the final part of this video, I'll be looking into localization. Now, some quick background. The reason why I started working with Telerik reporting was because in my job, I needed to find a solution for a customer that only speaks Spanish. And so uh, I needed to find a way to make sure that all of the controls in the screen, such as the preview, clear selection, toggle search, zoom in, zoom out, these options with this text was in Spanish. So I ended up finding some documentation in uh, the Telerix report, uh, sorry, the Telerix documentation pages. And uh, what I found was this script. It essentially has uh, an object with all of the labels and the text that is assigned to the labels. So as you can see here on the preview button, I changed a preview to previsualizar and uh, parameter editor select none to borrar la selección. So if we save this and uh, we uncomment this script and we go back to our browser and refresh, of course we have to run the application. Okay, that's my bad. Okay, now that our application is running again, we can actually see that our preview button changed from preview to previsualizar and uh, our clear selection is borrar la selección. So you can actually edit this file, this JavaScript file, to make sure that every single one of these labels is in Spanish. However, if your language that you want to support is not Spanish, you might want to name your file a different way. Now, I will include this link in the readme file for this project in GitHub, but this uh, link in the Telerik documentation basically inc includes the code that I just pasted in on the JavaScript file, but it also includes some instructions on how to name the file. So in my case, it was Spanish, but in your case, it might be French, Belgium, and you might need to name your file like this. Now, before the video ends, just some things to keep in mind. Remember that when adding some data sources, you need to make sure that the connection string is embedded into the report. So make sure that this option is always checked. If not, you'll get some compilation error or error with the report viewer when it's running. Another thing that you want to make sure is that uh, the picture that you're using is uh, of the actual size that you're, well, importing it in. So if you manage to find a way to resize this in the, the Telerik report designer, you might find that in the browser preview, the image size is not the same as you set it here. So make sure that it's the exact size. Another thing is to remember that the parameters by default have the visible value set to false. So make sure that it is true. And then finally, something to keep in mind that is very important, the DLLs for the Telerik report viewer, these guys, it's like, like five of them. These are stored in your bin folder initially. So you might want to move them to another folder because if you rebuild this application, these guys are just going to get deleted. So uh, that is it for this tutorial. Hopefully it wasn't completely awful. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you guys got some value out of this. Goodbye.